Welcome to the True Crime Number Six Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Lace. Today we're diving into seven failed assassinations that could have changed history. First, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Pondex, for sponsoring this episode. Check them out today at Pondex.com. Save 10% off your order using promo code Larry21. I'd also like to thank Audible for sponsoring this episode. You can get a free audio book by signing up for their free 30-day trial. Go to audibletrial.com slash Larry21. And now let's dive into seven failed assassinations that could have changed history. From Lincoln to JFK and Julius Caesar to Martin Luther King, entire books have been written about famous assassinations and how they changed the course of history. Few people, however, take more than a passing glance at those failed attempts that, had they succeeded, would have transformed formed history just as much, if not more, than those that were successful. While playing the what-if game is always a dicey proposition, it's interesting to speculate on how things might have turned out differently. But for the incompetence of an assassin, not only turn, in terms of what positives might have been lost, but what negatives might have been avoided as well. As such, below is my top seven list of failed assassination attempts. That, had they succeeded, would have had tremendous repercussions to this day. Be forewarned, I'm only including actual attempts here, not plots that were stopped before they had a chance to be carried out. So, number seven, Charles de Gaulle, president of France, 1962. While a controversial French president and World War II leader, the free French had several roles with assassins throughout his long political career, none None came as close to success as that of August 1962. Riding his car down the Avenue de la Liberation, the Gaulle's vehicle was suddenly sprayed with machine gun fire as it sped through the streets of Paris at 70 miles per hour. The attack was carried out by a Maverick French Air Force officer and infuriated the Gaulle's decision to grant Algeria its independence. The attack killed two policemen, shattered the rear window of his vehicle, and took out all four tires. This driver managed to get away with the president and his wife unarmed. Had he not, it's interesting to consider what direction France might have gone without the larger than life de Gaulle at the helm for the next seven years. Number six, Andrew Jackson. While most people imagine Lincoln's assassination to have been the first attempt on a sitting American president's life, few realize how close one of his predecessors came from being the first to die at the hands of the gunman. It happened late in Jackson's first term when a crazed man walked up to the president as he walked into the Capitol's building's East Portico, aimed two percussion pistols at Old Hickory. Remarkably, both pistols misfired, claiming Jackson unharmed, but his attacker bloodied and bruised after a thorough thrashing by the burly commander-in-chief. The man was unceremoniously hauled away by authorities, including a former congressman named Davy Crockett and after being deemed insane by doctors, was left to rot in an asylum for the rest of his life. Had the two shots fired at point blank range succeeded, the impact on the political direction the country was headed under Jackson's heavy-handed federalism would have been dramatic. Whether it would have been better or worse for the country is debatable, but that it would have been different is not. Number five, Ronald Reagan, President of the U.S., 1981. It's interesting to imagine what the 80s would have looked like had one of John Hinckley's hastily fired bullets found its mark and Reagan's more moderate vice president, George H.W. Bush, became president eight years earlier than he eventually did. Would he have been able to rejuvenate the economy as Reaganomics did in the mid-80s or rally the people to bring pressure on the Soviet Union? While well, much of Reagan's agenda would probably still have made it through, it's difficult imagining the more moderate Bush persuading the populace with the elegance of the great communicator or demanding that Gorbachev dismantle the Berlin Wall. Still, he did navigate the country through the collapse of the Soviet Union in two wars during this term, so it's entirely possible he would have been up to the task eight years earlier. Fortunately, modern medicine and Reagan's hearty constitution ensured that the world would never find out what the 80s might have looked like without the Gipper at the helm. Number four, Mussolini. It appears that 1926 was not a good year for Mussolini, who was to face and survive no fewer than four separate attempts on his life over the span of just seven months. The first attempt was made by an Irish woman who was nearly 
who nearly shot off his nose, while three others, all men, either missed a mark or were caught in the planning stages. In every case, they ended up deader than their intended target. Had any of them proven a little more steady on the trigger, however, the fascists would have not only lost the driving force behind their movement, but quite possibly even their tenuous hold on power. Who or what would have replaced them? Another fascist who would have proven even more capable than Mussolini himself? A reinvigorated monarchy? A pseudo-democratic republic? It's anybody's guess. And number three, Franklin Roosevelt, president-elect of the U.S. 1933. It's hard to imagine wondering the twin storms presented by the Great Depression and World War II without Roosevelt at the helm. But that almost was the case. It happened in February of 1933, when the then president-elect was riding in an open car in Miami, Florida. A crazed Italian immigrant named, I don't know, Butcher's name, Sangara fired five shots at him, missing him, but managed to hit and kill the mayor of Chicago, Anton Cernak. Had Sangara succeeded, Vice President John Garner would have been sworn in as the 32nd president, and the 30s could well have been very different. Better, worse, there's no way of knowing what kind of president Garner would have made. But it's hard to see how the more diminutive Garner would have gotten the New Deal, Social Security, or at least through a hostile Congress. Number two, Adolf Er. Apologies, Abraham Lincoln. Lincoln's assassination at the hands of actor turned Southern agitator John Wilkes Booth in 1865 was the stuff of legend as well as an unmitigated disaster for the South. Yet, imagine if an earlier attempt in August of 1864 had succeeded. While not generally known to most people, someone took a shot at the president while he was riding in his carriage around Washington, missing his head by inches and putting a hole in his trademark top hat. Had their aim been just a little better, the great emancipator would have been succeeded by Hannibal Hamlet which may have well given the upcoming election to Lincoln's overly cautious former commander, General George McClellan. Now either Hamlin or McClellan would have prosecuted the last year of the war, much less dealt with Southern Reconstruction, is a source for some debate. Lincoln's death, if combined with a lame duck, Hamlin and a conciliatory McClellan might have encouraged the South to hold on just a while longer. It resulted in an armistice rather than a victory, dramatically changing the history of America. And before we get to number one, we'd also we'd like to once again thank Audible for being our newest sponsor. Is that um, audibletrial.com slash Larry21 for a free 30-day trial and a free audio book of your choice. I've started listening to a handful of um, audio books from Audible. They have thousands to choose from from all different types of genres. I prefer the ones that are more uh, political thrillers. Tom Clancy, for one, I like his. Check them out today at audibletrial.com slash Larry21. And now, obviously, of all, number one, Adolf Hitler, 1944. The details of just how close a band of conspirators headed up by a disfigured army colonel named Klaus von Stauffenberg came to killing Hitler in his Prussian hideout in July 1944 is the stuff of legend. But consider what it would have meant to the war in Europe had it succeeded. Clearly, the conspirators would have had the upper hand, and with the help of key anti Nazi elements within the army, who saw this war as a lost cause at that point, might well have succeeded in ousting the Nazis and negotiating quick surrender to the Allies, shortening the war by 10 months and saving millions of lives in the process. With Germany entirely unoccupied by foreign invaders at that point, would not only have greatly reduced the level of death and destruction that was to be seen over the next few months, but would have undoubtedly altered the political landscape of Europe and likely changed the complexion of the looming Cold War, probably in the Allies' favor, as it was the bomb that was planted under Hitler's briefing table was a little too far away from their fear when it went off, dooming Germany in the process. And then our, is our list of the seven failed assassinations that would have changed history. Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Is there anyone that we should have included that we didn't? Let us know. And then let us know your thoughts on what these assassinations would have 
changed, do you believe, if they succeeded? And don't forget to hit that subscribe button and check us out on Good Pods, a podcast platform available on Apple and Android devices. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Hey, thanks for watching the True Crime Never Sleeps podcast. If you want to watch more videos, check out this video right here or that video. And also um, check out the Crime Junkies channel right here and subscribe to my channel right there. Thanks for watching. Take care.